Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today's module is entitled Reliability Engineering Fundamentals. And it's a complete guide for ASQCRE candidates. By complete guide, I mean a complete guide of the fundamentals. Uh, what is reliability engineering? That's a good place to get started. Reliability engineering is a subdiscipline of systems engineering that emphasizes the ability of equipment to function without failure over a specific time duration. It involves the application of engineering knowledge and specialist techniques to prevent or reduce the likelihood of failures. Key concepts every ASQ CRE candidate must know. CRE meaning Certified Reliability Engineering. It's one of the more common certifications for reliability engineering is the ASQ. And what must you know? Well, one thing that's just kind of the foundation of a lot of things is failure rate and mean time between failure. Now, failure rate is often symbolized by lambda. In fact, on the test, you probably see lambda as much as you see failure rate. So you need to be aware of that for sure. What is it? The failure rate, or lambda, is the frequency with which an engineered system or component fails, expressed in failures per unit of time. So one per year would be failure rate, one per year. Mean time between failures, MTBF, is the predicted elapsed time between inherent failures of a system during operation. And it's expressed as failures, or unit of time per failure. Okay, did you get that? Uh, lambda, failure rate, let me read that again, expressed in failures per unit of time, one per year. Mean time between failure is just the inverse of that. So it's expressed as unit of time per failure. And so their inverse relationship between these two. So mean time between failure equals one over the failure rate. And so that's something you just need to know and if you're going to go take the ASQ CRE exam. Now, lambda is, the, is due to constant failure rate type failures. And I'm going to explain that here in a little bit. And I'm going to come back and show you this formula again. Number two, you must understand the reliability function. The reliability function, or reliability at, at a given point in time, that's important for re reliability engineering. Okay, this has run for 350 hours. What is its reliability now? Because reliability inherently will change with time. So that's an important part of reliability engineering is to understand that. I think you inherently understand it anyway. The reliability function, are uh, at a given time, reliability at a given time represents the probability that a system will perform its intended function without failure for a specific specified period of time under stated conditions. Okay, so let's look at that. A function is a mathematical equation, there it is right there, and reliability at a given time equals base log e to the power of negative lambda, or failure rate, times time. It's a very simple formula but that's how you determine the reliability. Well, okay, and uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, notice there's an inverse relationship between failure rate and mean time between failure. So you could also make this equation say e to the power of negative time over mean time between failure. Just depends on what number they give you in a test question, right? Um, so you could also convert that into t over mean time between failure. Again, this is for constant failure rate uh, period. And we'll show you what that means here right now. Three, the bathtub curve is very fundamental to uh, a CRE, a reliability engineer. The bathtub curve describes the failure rate of a population over time consisting of three distinct periods. Early life, which is decreasing failure rate over time. Useful life, constant failure rate over time and wear out period, increasing failure rate during time. So let's look at it, here it is. You can see why it's called the bathtub curve. It looks like the cross section of a bathtub, that's how it got its name. And notice when you first get something, this is time by the way, and this is failure rate. And as time goes along, you can see when you first buy something, most people don't realize this, but uh, when you first buy something, it has a higher probability of failure. I buy new cars once in a while, and my biggest problematic period of time that I have with that automobile is in this period of time right here. 
I get recalls. The last call I the last car I bought brand new, I think I must have had six uh, recalls where they brought it in. Not nothing big, but just little things they realized they needed to fix. I'd go in there. It takes 15 minutes. They'd have me out of there. But still, once I got through this period, it keeps going for as long as I keep the car without any more problems. And that's what this is describing. You get something. Okay, it goes through this period. It starts out high, goes low, then it levels out. And this is called the constant failure period. It's pretty constant probability that uh, you'll have a problem. Then over time, you eventually start experiencing increased failures over time. Well, this is called the early failure period, burn-in period, constant failure rate period, and period of wear out. Now, the Weibull distribution is usually used on this part of the curve. Now, the Weibull could model this whole curve, just so you know. They'll test you on that, too. But it's not as user-friendly, so we oftentimes, for constant failure rate, use the exponential distribution. So this is failure rate for constant failure rate. Let me go back. That's what they mean here. This formula is for constant failure rate systems. So that formula is only legitimate but during that uh, constant failure rate period. Okay. Then, eventually, just because of the way the part is designed, the inherent design, inherited, in the life is, cycle is... Uh, Defined by what? The design of the machine. So uh, the design will start, uh, just because of the way it's designed, it's going to start falling apart more quickly during this period. We usually use the normal distribution to model this portion here. And that is the bathtub curve. It's very fundamental to reliability engineering. Reliability analysis techniques, failure mode and effects analysis, FEMIA, FEMIA is a systematic method for evaluating processes to identify where and how they might fail and assessing the relative impact of different failures. Now, this isn't usually for the inherent life of the product. This is more for special causes, which you need to take into account. And in reliability engineering, this is usually where we take that into account. Fault tree analysis uh, is a top-down. That's a key word to this, top-down. So if you ever take the ASQCRE exam, it says top-down method. It's usually uh, fault tree analysis. Fault tree analysis is a top-down deduct deductive failure analysis method that uses Bolinian logic to combine a series of lower-level events to analyze the causes of system failures. And I'm, this is just an introduction video. So I, what, Internally, what I want to do is tell you all about it, but we don't have time. I exceed the upper spec limit on time here. Uh, practical applications of reliability engineering. Understanding these fundamentals enables reliability engineers to design more reliable products and systems, predict and prevent failures before they occur, optimize maintenance schedules, reduce warranty costs, and improve customer satisfaction, meet regulatory and safety requirements. Okay, some of the areas that are focused on in the ASQCRE exam, you want to space, pay special attention to reliability, mathematics, and calculations. Um, I have all 19 ASQ certifications, but there's not any ASQ certification that is more analytical than the reliability engineer, CRE. And it's also one of the highest, one of the highest failure rates of all the ASQ exams because of all the mathematics. So that's a pretty important bullet there. Reliability, mathematics, and calculations is a big part of the body of knowledge. Life data analysis techniques, reliability testing methods, designed for reliability principles, and reliability program management. So those are, you know, that covers a lot of the body of knowledge, but uh, basically you have to cover the whole body of knowledge if you're going to pass that test. What are your next steps? Okay, you got started, you understand some of the fundamentals. Uh, next steps, mastering reliability engineering fundamentals is just the beginning. Continue your ASQCRE preparations by diving deeper into statistical methods, design techniques, and testing procedures. Our comprehensive training program covers all these areas in great detail. 
Our class uh, has approximately 90 lectures in it, and it takes approximately 124 hours to prepare for the exam. That's the average. Some people take longer, some people quicker. The cost of this class includes shipping for the instructor notes, ASQ handbook, and a calculator. It's basically everything you need for the test. I look forward to joining you in your ASQ certification journey. Hopefully you'll choose Alpha. Also, the class also comes with four mock certification exams uh, at the right number, 165 questions, and you get to go through there and practice. And uh, so that's a very important part of it also. To learn more about this uh, reliability engineering class, you can go to www.alphatc.com. Go to scroll down till you find uh, the CRE. Click on it, and it'll tell you more about it. And I also have a uh, website specifically designed just for this class. And it's found at www.asqcre.com. So check out those websites. And if you have any questions, please contact me and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. We prepare students for many of the ASQ certification exams, as you can see here. Well, congratulations. You have completed this lecture. I hope you learned something new. I hope it... Uh, kind of piqued your interest in the study of reliability engineering. It's a great career, and I think you'd really enjoy it. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.